receive that word. Let's all welcome our, our pastor here in Jesus' name. Morning. Oh, good morning. Good morning. Mm, this is a beautiful day that the Lord has made. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Right here in sunny Santa Cruz of all places. Well, to let you guys know a little bit, my name is Deontay. I've been all up and down California. I am so thankful for what the Lord has done in my life, for what I see the Lord is doing here in this mighty work where souls need to know their maker. Amen. We need to know our father. So all week I've been racking my brain because I've wanted to go through the book of Romans with you guys. I wanted to go through Romans 8, 18. It's my favorite verse. And all week, I could not make it happen. I looked at it, I wrote it down, and it looked great, but just something wasn't sitting right in my soul. And I was trying to figure out what is going on. Why can I not go over this passage? I feel like this is the one that these people need to hear. I feel like this is the one that the Lord wants to bring. And I prayed and I prayed, and the Lord told me, you need to be at the end of all of this. We need to see the end goal of what is going on. There's plenty going on in life, but we need to look at the end goal. And so I picked up my Bible and I started reading through the last book, the book of Revelation. And I figured there's nothing in here that's going to fit into like a 15, 20 minute sermon. There's too many things going on. It's going to be too crazy, too chaotic. And then I got to Revelation 21. And I would love for you guys to hear this with me. If you have your Bibles, please feel free to open them with me or on your phones, app them open. It's going to be Revelation chapter 21, the second to last chapter in the entire book that we see as scripture. Now, we're going to be looking starting at verse 21, or starting at verse 1 of chapter 21. Um, and we're going to look through a couple of verses together. There's going to be one that I'm going to zone in on with you guys, but... Just take a look with me. Revelation 21, verse 1. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I, hear, and I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. And he will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them as their God. And he will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain any more. For the former things have passed away. And he who is seated on the throne said, Behold, I and making all things new. Also he said, write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. And he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give from the spring of the water of life without payment. The one who conquers will have this heritage and I will be his God, and he will be my son. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this amazing opportunity at life, that we get to know you, that we get to be yours, that no matter how many times we mess up and how many ways you are still so loving, full of grace, full of kindness, full of truth, that you're our father who cares about the innermost being of our soul, that you knitted us in our mother's womb, that you've seen us from before time even was, that you've loved us far beyond our comprehension. God, I thank you that you are so merciful. We do not deserve your love. It is so great and so lavishly poured on us. God, just thank you for who you are. Help us this morning to see you more clearly. Help me this morning to speak whatever truth you have to say, God. Put me aside and speak wholly and boldly to your people. We need to hear you speak today. 
Lord, we thank you for all that you are and all that you're doing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Now, let me give you a little bit of context on what's going on in this book. In the book of Revelation, it's the final book. It is to tell what is going to come, our future hope. And in verse, in chapter 21, this is after everything has gone down. Out of all of the chaos that's going to go down, when everything is said and done, chapters 21 and 22 talk about the final hope, what the final days are going to look like. And in the beginning of verse 21, chapter 21 that I'm speaking to you guys about, it's showing what that end is going to look like. And I think the most beautiful part is in verse 4. I want to read it to you guys one more time. This is God speaking to his people. Chapter 21, verse 4 says, He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore, for the former things have passed away. What's so beautiful about this is, when you look all the way back in Genesis, the start of creation, God's big project that is us, Adam and Eve kind of messed up pretty badly. And God made a promise. He said, I am going to bring someone out of Eve. I'm going to bring someone to save you guys. And he describes it as saying, I'll bring someone, the serpent will bite his ankle, but he will crush the serpent's head. It's this beautiful, oddly poetic promise that says, I'll bring someone who will take the penalty, the poison of the serpent that you were tricked by, and he will finish that. And so he makes this promise, and for thousands of years, the nation of Israel, the people of Israel, God's people, were thinking that it's going to be this king who's going to come and knock over everyone else and make this huge castle that everyone was going to live in, and everything would be perfect then. And then Jesus shows up. This humble little baby beginning, Jesus, born in a manger, shows up. And he grows, and he clearly has the marking of the Lord. And when people look at him, they don't see a king who conquers. They see this meek person out of a middle of nowhere town in Israel. He's not going to come and conquer Rome. He's not going to come and conquer anyone. He speaks gently but firmly. He doesn't fight anyone, but he speaks truth that cuts to the heart. And all of Israel sees Jesus, and they say, that can't be the promise. And when Jesus takes the cross, when he's hung and he takes all of our sin and he dies, there's great mourning. Because the disciples looked and saw our king is dead. The Israelites looked and saw our promise is gone. And the most miraculous thing happens. Three days later, Jesus rises from the tomb. He conquers death and he appears before many. First a few, then a dozen, then hundreds. And he ascends and he makes a promise that the Holy Spirit is going to come. That everything that he has said will come to pass. And that he has all power and authority and grants it to his people. And suddenly the promise starts to make sense. When God promised that he was going to bring someone from Eve, it wasn't a physical conquering. It was a spiritual conquering. And not of some foreign enemy who's going to come in and destroy us, but from ourselves. You see, from the very beginning, we had a problem. It was a sin problem. And we needed that solved. And as much as God cares about what's going on in this moment, he cares infinitely more about your soul. And so when Jesus ascends, we start to get a picture of the church. That we're supposed to look different. That we are a people not of this world. And that we have a special hope. And this is that hope that we're talking about. This is what drove the disciples to seek Jesus in everything that he did. This is what drove Jesus into earth to sacrifice himself, to lay down his own life and pick it up again. Not because he wanted to flex his power for us. Not because he was backed into a corner and just had to do it. He wanted one amazing thing. Let me show you what that is. 
In verse 3 it says, God speaking, I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them, and they will dwell as his people. And God himself will be with them as their God. That is when we see in verse 4, he's going to wipe away every tear. No more sickness, no more death. Because that is the end goal. Guys, there's one thing that we can get confused so many times. Jesus is not here to make you a better person. Jesus is here to adopt you into his family. Amen. He's not here to make you better than anyone else. He's here to live with you. He's not here to soup you up and make you into something you're not. He's here to show you your true identity. Right. His son, his daughter, who gets to live with him forever. And when the Lord saw what happened in the garden with Adam and Eve, he said, sin is going to keep you from me, and I will not let that happen. So God came and pursued us. He laid down everything for us because he is that loving, because he is that gracious. And he saw we couldn't do it on our own, so he made the plan. He laid down his life to take our sin, and he rose again to be with us. And so... As believers, this is our hope. Not that we do enough charity events or not that we see enough things on this earth, but that we are in relationship with Jesus. And one day we will be with him forever, that God will dwell with us, that God will live with us. Amen. That we will be known as people of God, that we will be known as children of the creator of all things. And so when we gather here together, it's to come together and see these are my brothers, these are my sisters, these souls I will spend forever with because someone has paid a great price Amen. for it. And this isn't our mission that we've convinced God into. This is God's mission from day one. He promised, I'll take care of the issues. I'll take care of the venom that that snake put in you. I'll take care of sin. Will you let me adopt you? Amen. Will you be mine? Or will you continue in your ways? And here is the most tragic part. If you'll continue in with me, I'm going to pick up at verse 6. And he, being God, said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty... I will give from the spring of the water of life without payment. The one who conquers will have this heritage, and I will be his God, and he will be my son. But as for the cowardly, the faithless, the detestable, as for the murderers, the sexual immorals, the sorcerers, the idolaters, and all the liars, their portion will be in the lake that burns with fire and sulfur, which is the second death. Now, here's the tragic part, the but. God says so clearly, so evidently in verse 6, hey, I'm the Alpha and the Omega. I'm the beginning and the end. I am all that there is. If you're thirsty, I will give you what you need. No charge. And anyone who comes to me, I have conquered death. If you take hold of my victory, you're mine. You are my people. The tragic part is there will be people who do not even want this free gift that the Lord has given. There's no limitation. There's no hesitation. There's no prerequisite. You don't need to be good enough first for the Lord to call you his own. That's right. He's already done all of the work. Amen. All we need to do is turn to him. And the beautiful part is he's done everything. He says, if you are thirsty, I will give you the life of eternal. I will give you water that quenches that. If you would like to be my people, I will make you conquerors with me. You see, God isn't about finding the best of the best. God's about seeking you out. You are his prize and his crown jewel because he's decided that. He loves you and cares for you that deeply. And Guys, it is 
as simple, as beautiful, as amazing as turning to him and saying, Father, I want to know you. I, I turn away from these things. I don't want my sin. You've done all the work. I just want to know you. And for you who are believers now, this is our hope. When we wake up every day and life gets hard and it gets hard. Many of us know that it is hard at days. We can turn to this and know that God has this promise in verse 4. Where he says, I will wipe away every tear. There will be no more death. No more sickness. No more sorrow. None of that. You will simply be with him forever. For those of you who are believers, this is our hope and our promise. And this is the message that we should be sharing constantly. Amen. To know that we can tell people, hey, God has done everything. He will take away all of that suffering, all of that pain, all of that sadness. And you get to spend eternity with the one who knows you. That is a beautiful message that we need to share. And for those of you who don't know him, this is the promise that he has for you. When Jesus came into the world, he didn't come with a bunch of rules and regulations. He came with two things. He said, repent and believe. The kingdom of God is coming. Amen. And that's a beautiful thing. This kingdom where God will bring new Jerusalem, where he will bring these promises of wiping away your sorrow, all of your pain, all of your affliction, all of these things in life that just don't make sense and we question and wonder why did it have to be this way, God fixes it all. For those of you who don't know Jesus yet, he comes with this promise and he is waiting right now. He is holding back Amen. this kingdom so you can be a part of it. And he may come at any moment. We don't know, but we do know he freely offers. He freely invites. He freely calls for us all to know him. And that's the future that I hope and pray I get to see each and every one of you in. That we will be together in this beautiful kingdom with our Lord. And he will wipe away all of the tears. All of the things in this life that don't make sense, all of the pain and loss and trouble and sickness that don't make sense, he will rectify it. He will make it new. Because like he says, I am the Alpha and the Omega. I am making all things new. There's no more pain, no more loss, no more sorrow. And Jesus gives one final call. It will be one chapter after, in verse 22. Jesus is saying, Behold, I am coming soon, bringing my recompense with me to repay everyone for what he has done. I am the Alpha and the Omega. I am the first and the last, the beginning and the end. I am the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes so that they may have the right to the tree of life, that they may enter the city by the gates. I, Jesus, have sent my angels to testify to you about these things. For the churches, I am the root and the descendant of David. I am the bright and morning star. The spirit and the bride say, come, and let the one who hears, that is you, let the one who hears say, come. And let the one who is thirsty come. Let the one who desires to take water of life without price come. That is our calling. Guys, what I'm describing is the final day, and it is the most beautiful day. Where God comes to his people. He brings the new heaven to you, and he says, I will live with you. You will be my people. And Jesus calls out and he says, until that day. For all who have heard, for all of my believers, for all of my disciples, your mission is one word, come. Calling others to come and know their creator. Calling everyone to come and know the one who says, I am the Alpha and the Omega. I am the beginning before you were here and I am the end when I'll be with you forever. And so when we look at this, beautiful passage where God says, I'll wipe away every tear. 
where heaven comes down to us, where Jesus calls out and says, I will give drink to anyone who is thirsty. What are we to do? I have two charges for you. If you know the Lord, go and call many. There is a beautiful kingdom. And there are many of your brothers and sisters, our family members, that do not know their father yet. So go out today, tomorrow, until the end of the ages and call people to come and know the father that loves them so deeply. Amen. That is your charge when you see something this beautiful. Go, share, spread. We know how to do this. And for those of you who do not know Christ, I have one charge for you. The same charge that Jesus said for years on earth. Repent and believe because your father is coming and he wants to dwell with you. Let's come home together. Let's know our family and know the beauty of our father. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let me pray, you guys. Lord, we thank you for the magnificence of your word. We thank you for the beauty of the promise that you have for us, that you allow us so much grace, that you give to us so freely and lavishly, that you are so beautifully and amazingly gracious. Lord, I thank you that you make everything new, that you make us new, that we can't sin enough to get away from you, that we can't sin too much to be redeemed by you, that you give us all things, that you have done every ounce of the work. God, I thank you that repent and believe is not a dogmatic call, but it is a beautiful invitation to put down these things that hurt us and to pick up knowledge of you. God, I thank you that you make knowing who you are free for us. You are so beautiful, so beyond us, so amazing. But I thank you for all that you are. And I thank you for all that you have made us to be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 To worship you, I live. To worship you, I live. I live to worship you. Just say, oh, oh.